You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. It is September and we are sharing adoption stories with you. We have another great adoption story to share with you today from our friends at Lutheran Family Service in Iowa. Joining us today, Vic Garcia. Vic, thanks so much for being our guest on The Coffee Hour. Thank you for having me. So, Vic, share with us a little bit of history of the the Garcia family. And what should we know about the Garcia family before you even started thinking about adoption? Well, to begin with, which we'll get into, is it's kind of a two-part story. Well, three, if, 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 if you want to go all the way back to the beginning of my wife and I, adoption is, has always been part of our family planning before we even got married. This was something that we discussed prior to us getting married in 2010. So being 2022, we've been married for 12 years plus. So this was something that was something we considered and it took us a while to get it move forward with, which I can get into in a little bit. So what what was that story after you were after you were married? What happened then? Was adoption something that that was kind of on the plate right away? You mentioned that it took a little while for you to get into. Well, the the little while was not my wife. I'll tell you that it was me. <laughs> well, so you know, yeah, I was at, at so just for context, you know, I worked as a police officer, so you know, security and, you know, worrying about things that she didn't have to worry about that were normal people don't worry about are always in the mm-hmm. forefront. So things that I worried about was like job security, you know, where we're at in life and where my wife was like, let's do it. Let's do it right now. I'm like, we're not ready. So I was, I was the person holding us up. And then when we first learned about adoption, there was talks of open adoption versus not. And, you know, everyone is trying to do more of the open adoptions. And for those who don't know, that is where you're opening yourself to a relationship with the birth parents, which I think is phenomenal and a great thing to do now. But at the time I was worried about, you know, is there baggage attached to that? What if they want their child back? You know, all these things that I was just not informed about. And I had a hard time trying to come to the realization of what actually open adoption was. So as I learned more about it, I'm like, okay, yes, I'm willing to do it. But it wasn't until like five years later after we got married that we really started the process. And so I, we have, we've been through two adoptions. We have my daughter who is a wonderful little girl. She is five years old. She'll tell you she's five and three quarters old, (laughs) which technically she's five and seven eighths if we're going there. Um, And then we have a 10 month old son who was also adopted. But again, the beginning was me more so than my wife of like, when are we ready? And I realized that we just have to put it in God's hands. It's we're trying to control something that shouldn't be controlled other than like, you know, the paperwork and stuff like that. Right. (laughs) You mentioned that your reluctance, some of your reluctance was due to just not being informed, not being educated on some of the the matters concerning adoption. How did you become informed and educated on those matters, such as open adoption and and some of the the questions that you had about that? So our our first adoption went was through another agency in Illinois. And before we went to Lutheran Family Services that did our second adoption through. And this the agency that we worked with actually did a really good job of providing classes for us. And it was, again, taking the time to take those classes and actually listening and putting away my preconceived notions of what adoption was. And a lot of it was anecdotal and personal stories of other people who have been through it, realizing that, you know, just like anything else, we're not the only ones that are going through this, right? There's other people who are willing to share who I've gone through, who have the same anxieties they have that. And then so these classes and hearing these stories from other people, which I kind of hope to share today, and also the reason why I agreed to do this, is that you're not the only one. And once I realized that, that this is not something new, and this is actually something really good. Um, and, and, and at the end of the day, it was just active listening. And I learned to sit down and just listen. And then mm-hmm. remove those, like I said, preconceived notions. Mm-hmm. What were some of the stories that you were able to hear from the other families through these classes? So a lot of them were about the relationships 
that these adoptive families, adoptive parents gained from the birth parents, the birth mother in particular, most of the time. Statistically, it's been mostly the birth mother and how they became part of the family. That, that it, that for, and I'll tell you, my daughter, we have a great relationship with her birth mom. In fact, we came to an agreement and not an agreement, but we asked her like, what would she like to be called? And they, she calls her, not to give her first name, but like Mama L. She's like, she, oh, I want to see Mama L, my daughter will say. And there is no, so she has essentially become part of our family, just like those stories that I've heard from other families. And then I even heard stories of families that had subsequent ad adoptions who were longing for that relationship with the birth mother to become part of the family because you just learn to work with each other. And then I also learned that like for that child's psyche, you know, for her, for that child growing up, they, that becomes part of their story. It's not something, you know, taboo or something that's like, we don't talk about, right? It becomes part of their identity. And it was just great to see these other families go through that process. And now me talking to you, talk to both of you to be on this other side of that it was great. So you shared that your first adoption was through another agency and more recently another adoption through Lutheran Family Service. How did you come to find Lutheran Family Service? So uh, try to veer not to get into the, the politics side of it, but the agency we were working with started taking less new adoptive families and they, they were saying that there we heard that their median wait time was taking longer. And I mean, we all know what Illinois is as far as when we go on the topic of abortion and different things. And I'm all anecdotal, so I don't know about data statistics. So we were looking for other options where there was more of a, what do you call it, a pathway to providing services for counseling for the birth mom and and services. And, and just we wanted to work with a, a Christian organization that truly cared about life from conception all the way to, you know, to end of life, all the way straight through everything, right? And that's how we came. And when we did our research, Luther Family Services kind of fit that bill, what we were looking for. And that's the agency we decided to work, start working with moving forward for the next one. And it is not to say that the other agency wasn't great. They were phenomenal, a great agency. But, you know, there is a climate change here in Illinois that just created that avenue for us looks elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So what was that process like with them already having gone through the process once and adopting your daughter? What was that process like then going through your second adoption? Was, were there new new things, any, anything different that you had to that you had to learn new things? Well, I will say this. It wasn't any easier when it came to anxiety or waiting or just waiting to waiting for that call. That didn't change. Like, even though we had been through it with a, with our daughter, now going through and waiting for our son, that call, this that that stress and that longing was very much still there. Like it, even though you you would say we're experienced, that didn't change or help in that respect. But as far as new, so going back to our daughter, we have a great relationship with the birth mother. In fact, I would say this, and I'd be. I feel like I would not be doing justice if I didn't share her story a little bit more before I get into that. And mm -hmm. so just to give you the miracle of it was we got on the list and this is, by the way, we're considered an outlier. So let me say this for the listeners. We are an outlier when it comes to the, how long it took us to wait. We got on the list officially to adopt in August and we got a phone call in October and we got a call about our birth mother that's found us through their online portal and just said that she just felt like we were the match. And when we first met her, she felt as she had made the courageous decision to place her daughter for adoption. It may not be clear in using that word courageous. And she felt that she this this beautiful baby that she was going to have was meant and was a gift for someone, for a family like ours. And like she drew, she believed that from the beginning when she made that decision. And she was supposed to be born, you know, later in the month of November. 
and she was born like 10 days later. And we were holding her in our arms three, no less than three hours from birth. And so, and from that point forward, we just had this beautiful relationship developed with the birth mom that she's gone on outings with birth mom, just the two of them, you know? So having that base of experience of like just wonderful connection, God given like blessing of it, like it, it's hard to walking into the next option, not wanting that, right? Not ex- wanting to expect that. So that was a little hard because this was this la- next last adoption was different. Birth birth mom was an undocumented immigrant, and obviously with that, there's a little bit of fear of giving too much information, right? Giving too much information where she's at, giving too much information of her status. So it's been a little bit of a struggle of uh, trying to figure out a way to have an open relationship, which we do want, but we also understand the complexity of the situation. So that's kind of something new that we're kind of dealing with. And we're asking for, you know, God's graces and how to handle this. And because if we think about long-term, you know, we're going to have our daughter who has this beautiful relationship with her birth mom. And then potentially we may have our son who will see that, but may not have that. So that's kind of something new that we're learning to navigate or we're trying to figure out that we're praying about or trying to reach out to the birth mom. So I don't know if that answered your question, but it kind of went a ways on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that really gives us a a picture of of some of the complexities that that you might, that that are part of uh, adoption Mm -hmm. and um, what challenges you might face it not only now, but in the future as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go back to the preparing for adoption, even for your first adoption. What are the steps that a family goes through typically to prepare for an adoption? So, yeah, a great question. Well, f- every adoption agent is going to have classes. It, it also depends by state, right? Because our subsequent adoption was drew in Iowa and our first one was in Illinois. So, y- Learning the process itself can be a little overwhelming at first, but you know, the, the, the agency, especially like Lutheran Family Services, uh, provided us with drew classes and drew communication, drew literature, trying to figure it out. So there's a logistical aspect of it, right? Of trying to f- navigate the classes we have to take. And then there's also a financial aspect of it. Of, I mean, it's, there is. It's not hidden. It's it's it, it's not financially easy for most people. People are in different states. So one of the things is figuring out our budget. And it's not a cheap thing. By the time you pay for all the administrative fees, it's quite expensive. So that's one of the things that we had to take a hard look was not only learning and educating yourselves about it, taking the classes, but also aligning ourselves, making sure we're budgeting, we're saving, we're doing all these things in a way that we are prepared for that child when it comes and when he or she arrives that we can support her and support him, but also make sure that we're not doing it detriment to our own family, right? And then for us, praying, right? Uh, praying ourselves that we open ourselves up and relying on God that at the end of the day, we don't know who's going to call us. You know, that's not something we know. So, and also preparing for possible loss because we did have in between, before we got the call about our son, we did get a call and got matched with another birth mom and she t- decided to parent and we were so happy. So it was one of those things, there was a loss to us, but there was also, what's the word I'm looking for? Happiness. And the fact that this young mother decided to parent. So it kind of mixed feelings in that, right? So be pre- being prepared for those mixed feelings because nothing's ever sh- for sure until even when you receive that child in your arms, there's still paperwork, right? There's still legal stuff that needs to happen. So you have to open up your heart. And for both our children, the moment we held them, we love them immediately. Yeah, like we almost even loved them before we received them in our arms. But we also knew that at any point, this child may not be considered ours. You know, in fact, we have a book in our, in our house, which is we have it listed as our spiritual children, children we pray for. And for example, one of the that children in our spiritual children book that we pray for is that child that that mother decided to parent, you know, and that 
may not be our child, but we were part of that process for a moment in time in life. So we still will continue to pray for that family. So that's one of the things you have to prepare for through the process. We are learning about adoption today through the Garcia family's story of adoption, and we have more to share in just a moment. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason, to use your God-given gifts to help others. To live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world. To live a life that's uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50-plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live uncommon. Welcome back to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We are sharing adoption stories this month, and today we're learning about the Garcia family's adoption stories, (laughs) plural, (laughs) uh, with multiple adoptions and learning uh, about both adoptions, more recently an adoption with Lutheran Family Service. And our guest today is Vic Garcia. So, Vic, you've shared with us the, the the stories of how you've gone through the adoption process, how that's changed your family, and how that, as you shared right before the break, how that's been very important to you in your lives, that not only the children that, that the Lord has placed in your family through adoption, but those that, that you've gotten to know through this process that didn't necessarily end up in your family as your children, but you now have a connection with and, and continue to pray for, even if you don't get to get to know them throughout their lives, continuing to pray for them. That says a lot about what it means to be a parent and to care for and love a child. Mm-hmm. What, tell us, let's go back to the the times when you mentioned earlier about meeting your child for the first mm-hmm. time. Let's talk about your daughter and then mm-hmm. we'll talk about your son as well. The 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 moment that you got that news that uh, your child is, is born and you get to hold them very soon. So I re- it was a Monday morning. And I'm going to give you the story real quick because that's what I like to do is Monday morning, I am sick. I am just ill and, you know, I have what you call the quote unquote man flu because when I get sick, I'm not, <laughs> yes, I am that typical. So my wife's in, the, in her study doing, working from home and we get, this is how, we get the phone call it is like, birth mom wants you at the hospital right now. And, and by the way, She's like, this is a whole week ahead before we're, she were expecting her. And I immediately was not sick. I was like, immediately last time, I'm like, get dressed. We need to go. And my wife's like, trying to figure out, what are you talking about? I'm like, we got the phone call. Yes. So, and keep in mind, our, our counselor, who was great in our first agent, she was phenomenal. She also, she, she prepared us, you know, and we were assigned counselor like we are at Lutheran Family Services. And one of the things they tell us is like, you know, at any point, this mother may choose to parent, you know, like in Illinois, there's a three day wait from the moment of birth that the mother cannot assign away her rights until three days after birth. But we are given the option if the birth mother okays it to take to for the child to be placed with us. So even though we're holding the child three days uh, prior to the signing, there were, were given that caution don't fall in love. You know, I'm like, how can you not? It's how impossible. can you not? <laughs> and, that, and that's where I'm getting to is like, so we got to the hospital waiting and everything else. And then we found out that she's born. You know, this was like three in the afternoon and by 530, and I'm not exactly in the time, by 530, we're already holding her in our arms for the first time. We meet birth mom and, and we are the nurse hands, of course, to my wife, you know, first. And my wife is just holding her. and. And I like even thinking about it right now, I just, I want to tear up and think about like the immediate love that just flooded us, the feelings of love. And just, I, you know, in knowing that, you know, we had till Friday, essentially at that point, it was Thursday actually, but we did not get notified till Friday that there was this time period that birth mom may decide, you know what, I will parent. How can you not just fall in love with this little baby? And that's what happened. Like you, it, 
I and I heard that. I'm like, well, I don't know if I'll love this child because they're not my own, you know, they're especially, you know, if you're no, you you immediately fall in love. And it happened again with our son. Um, when we held him in our arms, we it was shortly after birth, it was the same thing in regards to the mom wanted us to be holding him immediately. Like she knew she was placing again courageous decision with him. She wanted us to be holding them immediately and create that bond. And uh, yes, their bond is almost instantaneous. It's just amazing the love we have learned from our Lord and how that is truly, um, you know, first of all, right in marriage, you learn to love each other. And then through marriage, you know, with God, how immediately that's just shown in how we learn to ha- love his baby. And then you think it takes over time. No, it's immediately. And like, I emphasize that, I cannot emphasize that much. It was immediate, <laughs> like immediate. <laughs> <laughs> How has it been? Uh, you mentioned your son is, is what, 10, 10 months old now? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I'm not going to mention questions with him, but yeah, 10 months old. Yeah. Yeah. How has it been uh, with the two of them together? How was, I was older sister with her, her, with their little brother now. So we, again, going, giving context from the beginning, we talked about adoption with her. You know, do you want a baby brother or baby sister? And then any given week, it's like, I want a baby brother. No, 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 no. This week, I want a baby sister. No, no, no. Baby brother. I'm like, well, we can't decide. Is is God, what God gives us is what's going to be. And then um, when we told her about, when we found out it was baby brother, she's like, oh, I'm going to have a baby brother. I mean, she was so excited. I mean, we, we, we jokingly tell people that her son just has to get used to her hugs. He just has to, because she's always like, I'm hugging. And she gives these fierce hugs of just like, I love this kid. I love this brother of mine. And I'm like, he's just got to get used to it because that's how she is. She's, she's very loving um, and very much of an extrovert. So she makes friends with anybody and she very high energy. And she shares that with her brother very much. So, (laughs) (laughs) so you, you spoke openly with your daughter about a, adopting your son how does she speak about adoption to her friends and to others and to family members how does she relate about this this adoption story to others that is a good question and that i can't answer reliably i do like i don't have like a very good story to share with that fact but Mm -hmm. it is a normal conversation like she does she knows very much that we went to iowa by the way we spent 17 days in iowa it felt like the longest day ever after it was born. It was for, due to bureaucratic waiting. Mm-hmm. But she shares that story. Like, I went to Iowa. You know, I went to pick up my brother. And mm-hmm. although she will say, do we have to be a baby? He cries a lot. <laughs> 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 so, you know, there's there's also that aspect of it where she jokes about. But just like her own story, she very openly talks about her birth mom, Mama L. Birth. She Like the other day, there was a flag flying from birth mom's home country and she goes that's my baby brother's flag that's my baby brother's flag and it was just kind of funny that she recognized that so she not to be able to answer the question more fruitfully and she is a normal part of conversation is what i'm trying to get at so it's not Mm -hmm. something that's hidden again right it's very open Wow. What a story. I love it. Yeah. (laughs) Anything else you'd like to share with us about Lutheran Family Service and your experience with and through Lutheran Family Service as we wrap up our time together today, Vic? So I will say this. My experiences with Lutheran Family Service was phenomenal. And and the counselor that we worked with there went above and beyond. And you could tell that the love for people, you know, that God teaches us was there. Our counselor, because you know, there's at the end of the day, they have to follow the law. There's only so so much that they can help, right? You know, there's still human laws that we have to follow that are that kind of constrain our ability to help birth moms to a certain point, right? But our counselor definitely showed the love that in in Christ's love of extending her empathy, her sympathy, her reaching out to birth mom and helping her, especially. As I already stated earlier, and being in that undocumented, again, the whole idea of caring for life from conception to death, right? All the way straight through. And here's this human being that needed extra care or not extra care, just I don't want to say extra time. Yes, extra attention, but with love. And she did it. And 
whenever we had a question, she would go find it out. Whenever she's like, you know what? I'm going to go visit her. I'm going to go find out. And this is stuff that was beyond her purview of what would be under normal circumstances. And it was just great to see how much the counselors cared there. And, and through like our, I say we were there for 17 days, but in the grand scheme of things, we did not complain because, you know, our angst of waiting 17 days to come back home is nothing even compared to birth mom, right? Of her circumstances of the whole placing. And so we took that as, you know, as a suffering that but humbling moment that God is also reminding us, right? And but again, going back to the Lutheran Family Services, they provided that extra care not only to us but to birth mom. And as I said before, it was just it was just great to see. Our guest today, Vic Garcia, sharing a beautiful adoption story. Thank you so much for being our guest today on the Coffee Hour, Vic. No, thank you for having me, and thank you for allowing me to share this story. I hope I didn't ramble on too much. <laughs> You've been listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golsa. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere. Anywhere.